be there through the difficult times. We will be there to build a strong and prosperous future for all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. The feds have reached a deal with Newfoundland and Labrador to offset the enormous costs of the Muskrat Falls hydroelectric project. It's worth $5.2 billion and ensures electricity rates won't double when the project goes online this November. Muskrat Falls has been in trouble for years, well over budget and far behind schedule. Andrew Fury is the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. He's in St. John's. Premier, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. I'd like to start by asking you to explain to Canadians why it is your province needs this money. So we uh, went down a path of what's called Muskrat Falls, which is a mega hydroelectric project uh, in southern Labrador on the Churchill River uh, almost a decade ago. And it was uh, sanctioned at approximately $6.2 billion. It was supposed to take five years to complete. Uh, this is it's now, of course, 2021. It's over a decade since it was first announced. Uh, not only has the timeline spiraled out of control, but also the budget has as well. And we're over $13 billion uh, now into the construction. We're hoping to have commissioned by November. But as this project commissions, uh, the rate of return to, to the project itself is based on the user rate and therefore subsequently the, the electricity rate that consumers pay. And so this has always been a source of contention uh, for the last decade amongst uh, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, recognizing that if the project is pretty straightforward math, if the project doubles in, in the budget, then the only way to pay for it is to double our electricity rates. And, and that's why today's announcement is so incredibly important, not just for the ratepayers of the province, but indeed the future of Newfoundland and Labrador. I was going to say for your province's finances, uh, was there any consideration that the province was at risk of going into bankruptcy if you didn't get this deal? Well, you know, I, you know, bankruptcy is a bad word. I don't think, you know, we would definitely recognize that we were in a significant fiscal crisis. Uh, I've never shied away from that. There's no sense of ostriching on that. We need to own that. We need to understand it. And that's why we commissioned the report that was released just last May that shows us, shows the economic fiscal challenges and demographic challenges that we are facing as a province. But I think that there is a future here in Newfoundland and Labrador, a real vibrant future here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We know that we have an abundance of green energy here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and we just need to make sure that we're doing the right deals in the future to uh, not only develop that, but to make sure that we're getting the returns to Newfoundland and Labrador's coffers so that we can chart our own path forward. Uh, there's no question that Newfoundland and Labrador has a history of hydroelectric deals uh, that haven't always turned out favorably. And we need to learn from those lessons and make sure that we don't make those mistakes in the future. Is this it for the help that you're going to need from the federal government when it comes to Muskrat Falls? Can, can the province handle things moving forward from here on out? I mean, this certainly gives us some breathing room. There's no question about it. We know that we have a fiscal gap that is upwards of $800 million. Uh, we're a commodity-based uh, economy, and uh, we're a micro example of uh, the Canadian economy. Uh, so as the price of oil goes up, we do better. As the price of oil goes down, and other commodities that we have, like nickel and iron ore here, our, our coffers hurt. Um, so uh, we are very fortunate to be part of a federation, and in good times we contribute. I mean, we're not on equalization right now, despite our fiscal woes. Um, and that's a conversation that we're looking forward to developing in the future. But right now, this deal right now is incredibly important for the fiscal situation of the province, the economic situation of the province, and it allows us the flexibility to chart our own path moving forward. I was speaking with my colleague, David Cochran, who, of course, is a longtime political reporter in Newfoundland and Labrador. Newfoundlander, too. Yeah. I was talking to him ahead of this interview, and he sort of summed things up like this. If, if dealing with Muskrat Falls stops the bleeding for the province's finances, there's still major surgery that needs to be done to make it fiscally uh, healthy again. What is it that people in your province should be bracing for in terms of difficult decisions you're going to have to make if you are going to indeed uh, get to a balanced budget at some time in the near future? Absolutely. And I, look, I'm happy to uh, use the medical analogy. If you need a if we need surgery, there's no one better to do it than a surgeon. Um, but, uh, you know, that may, be, that may be downplaying the significance of the fiscal situation that we're currently in. We understand uh, the gravity of the situation. We commissioned a report from Dame Moya Green, which I think we all knew the elements of it, but it succinctly puts together in a well-crafted document the economic and fiscal situation of the province. There is no one budget that's going to fix this for the project, for, for the province. This needs a strategic 
approach that over time we will change the demographic crisis. We'll realize our economic opportunities, especially in this time of energy transition, to ensure that we have a path forward. There is no one magic bullet that's going to fix this. I mean, I've said from the beginning, we can lay everybody off. That's not what we're going to do because that doesn't, that hurts the economy, but that wouldn't fix the problem in and of itself. So we need to make sure that we have a measured, balanced, prudent response to the fiscal challenges that we face. And today is a good day because it allows us the flexibility uh, we need uh, to be able to craft that path forward and that strategy forward. There's another issue that I want to ask you about. Uh, yesterday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was asked about vaccine passports, and he says that Ottawa is going to be involved in creating some sort of framework so that if Canadians are traveling abroad, there's some international certification so they can say, hey, I've been vaccinated, let me come on vacation in your country. But it's going to be up to the provinces themselves to actually figure out what a vaccine passport might look like. How are things going in your province in developing, uh, whether it's a certificate or, or whatever that document's going to look like, to prove that people from your province have been vaccinated? Sure, and these are ongoing discussions, of course. Um, uh, you know, we're still in the, the conceptual framework uh, component of these discussions. Uh, we have always said that we would be happy to share uh, you know, data with, uh, with the federal uh, government uh, to allow them to develop a passport, uh, recognizing privacy concerns and, and, and what have you. But there is, there is a mechanism to achieve that, I'm confident. Um, but here locally, uh, we uh, right now, you, you can get proof of your vaccine uh, online. Uh, and I think it will be an easy uh, transition forward, uh, allowing for international travel. Uh, to use a to use a PDF for a secured uh, platform to ensure that they can show that at the borders. But the whole world is going through this transition right now. I mean, so one thing's for certain: whatever we say today is probably not what's going to be what we're ultimately going to land on. And, and and I think it's incumbent on all premiers and, and the prime minister to ensure that what we're doing is is cohesive and uh, allows to be recognized so that Canadians can travel abroad. There are a couple of things you just said in that answer that I just uh, want to go back on. Uh, you say sure. that it's, it's in the conceptual stage, but at the same time, people can go online and get proof of their vaccination. Uh, so what do you have to do to, is, are you going to have to wait for the, for the feds to give you some guidance on how this is going to look for people who want to leave the country uh, to go elsewhere when, you know, uh, rules change and people can go on international vacation again? It sounds like you got something there, but it, it's not quite where it needs to be. You know, what happens next to get there? Well, we're happy to work, work with the federal partners to ensure that whatever that, that is, and I think everybody, let's be honest, like every country is scratching their head wondering what that is and how you validate it and how it's not abused. And uh, so we're happy to uh, work with our federal partners to ensure that that uh, passport, as you say, is the right one, the right tool to solve the problem. I think, you know, that those are, so when I say it conceptually, taking it from where we have it, yeah, sure, but I'm pretty sure every province has some proof of vaccine, but we all have proof of our measles, mumps, rubella vaccine as well, if you wanted to obtain it. So how to take that information and turn it into a usable format, I think is the, is the conundrum and the question that we're all trying to answer. And I'm happy to entertain all options to ensure that Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and are Canadian and they can travel abroad uh, with proof of vaccine. Premier Fury, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks so much, Katie. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.